Hey crafters, it's me Jen Evers with Koality Crafts and welcome to another Friday night. Still haven't gotten that thing figured out. Although, if you are, are not new to my channel, I did finally figure out the Android so that it will flip and toggle when I move my phone. Anyway, <laughs> that's awesome. So people are all excited about how I did the flowers. Let's see what else. Um, plus how you made the gems on the blue flowers. These little, these little guys. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I did all that. It's going to go kind of fast because we've only got, you know, 45, 50 minutes so that I can get set up um, and ready for the sale that's going to come after that. Uh, wow. I was really hoping to be able to make this bigger. Hey guys, Elise, Debbie, Sherry, Kathy. Hello, Linda Carafa. Um, I kind of want to get rid of this stuff that's on here. I don't understand why. I got to look at it really tiny again. So it's going to be really hard for me to tell what I'm showing and what I'm not showing. I don't know why they constantly switch this stuff. Let me see if this makes a difference. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Jamie in the house. Okay, so let me just go over a little bit of what's going on. And thank you for just sticking with me in this slow beginning. I'm always thrown off when that is different than what I expect it to be. The two stamps I'm using today. So the flowers here are what? Okay. <laughs> that one is coming by me. Okay. This, this is the flower. It's called... Um, Dogwood Flowers, and it's by Deep Red Cling Stamps. We are going to do an order for these. So if you guys really love this stamp and you like how these flowers turned out, this is the product that I'm using, and we will order them for you. So Dogwood Flowers by Deep Red. And then also a Stampendous stamp for the background. I used this one. 6x6 Stampendous stamp. I think it's just called Fern. Fern Garden. So here's what that one looks like. Fern Garden. Really, really cool. And you notice that it's on the, the background, in the subtle background. And that's the watercolor part. Now, the reason why I'm doing this series, and some of you guys, guys are going to look at some of these videos and go, well, but that's not really watercolor. Well, it is watercolor because watercolor comes in a lot of different um, techniques and ways and forms like it could be spray it could be gelato it could be um, ink it could be whatever um, so I'm going to show you a couple of different little watercolor tricks so that you can make the, the flowers look watercolor so I've got a pink flower and a blue flower and they look watercolored the background here behind the flowers that looks watercolored and they weren't. They weren't watercolored, but I'm going to show you how I got that done. Another person wants to know how I made these little gems. I'm going to show you that because all I did was alter these gems. And they're just pearls. But they look, they look like gold. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that is going to go on here. Um, I'm going to stick to making this card today. If you're interested in this one that I made that has these ferns, if you're looking for um, the Punch Bunch Fern one, they still have them out there, but I can't get these for you. However, I can order this set for you. So if you're interested in getting some ferny looking things in small die cuts so that you can get... I want to flip this over without losing all my dies. So that you can get all those fun different kinds. So there's the one that looks like the one we're using today or this one. And then it's got a lot of different ones that you can use. I like to do this one through um, my die cut machine over and over with different greens and then keep them, you know, as extras. I have done that in the past. I don't have any in here right now. I probably used them all up. So we can recommend this one and this one we can order for you. So if you're interested in getting the, um, the little leaves, what is this one called? It's called 661206. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. It doesn't say on here. Anyway, um, Penny might Penny might put that out for you guys. Um, so we'll be doing a little bit of distressing. So I've got the little distress tool here. 
Um, we can get dress, distress tools if you don't have one. This one happens to be close to my heart. I've had it forever and a day and it still works great. We're going to be using some distress inks and some distress oxide sprays. And that's what we're going to use to do our watercolor today. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create this background using the Stampendous Fern Garden Stamp. I'm going to take this whole big stamp out of here. We're going to stamp the whole thing so we don't waste it because we can use more of it on different things. And I'm going to use a whole piece of um, 110 pound white cardstock just because then if I want to use it on another project, I can. So these are the three colors we're using today. If you're interested in getting these Distress Spray Oxides and you didn't take advantage of our pre-order when we did the whole set, I've got one extra set that has these three colors in it, Mowed Lawn, Squeezed Lemonade, and Twisted Citron. If you're interested in getting that full set, I've got one of those. Otherwise, if you're interested in, in these distinct colors, these exact colors, let me know and we can order these for you as well. So I'm not spraying over every every surface I have. I'm going to bring in my spray box and hopefully that'll work out well. There we go. And we're just going to spray on here. And first of all, we have to shake these guys up. And I'm going to start with the lightest one, which is squeezed lemonade. Get as close or as far away as you want. I'm going to kind of mix them up a little bit. Then I'm going to do some twisted citron. Now you can kind of see why I'm doing it in the box. And then at the very end, the darkest one is mowed lawn. I'm going to try to kind of finish up the, any of the spots that seem to not get covered with ink. And it's already beating up because I have a lot of spray on there. If you want it to be super watercolor, you can go ahead and add in a little bit more just a water spray. So spritz on a little bit of water. That's what's going to give it the watercolor effect. That's what we're focused on today is the watercolor effect. So I'm going to take this out of here. Put that down here. And then put my paper down. You might see some of the water because I have a lot on there soaking through the paper. That is just fine. It's not going to hurt anything. The more water you put on it, the more watercolor it's going to be. And then peel it up. Ooh, this one's got super watercolor compared to my last one. So it's going to look very, very different. While I still have more on there, I'm going to see if I can get one more print out of it. It's almost like jelly printing, only we're doing a watercolor print with a stamp. Oh, that's pretty too. That's really pretty. So we could use either one of these. Now, we need one wet wipe, and I've got one here. So if I bring that card back in, do you notice this stuff on the edge of the card here that looks like um, fabric or something? That's the wet wipe. So you want to take your wet wipe <laughs> and clean up the stamp, but try to get some of that green, those different greens, all over your wet wipe because we're going to use that. And so that's how we get the wet wipe. That's another watercolor look. I've got a lot of green on this one. The other one I didn't get quite as much green on. That's okay. I'm going to have to use a scrubby tool to get the rest of that off of there, but I'm going to go ahead and clean this off quick. I'm going to set that aside. I'll be able to get that spray out by rinsing it underneath the faucet in a minute. Or maybe we'll just leave it to the end. If you notice, I've got a new um, placemat, new craft mat here. Um, I got the, did I move the thing again? 
look at me moving this all over the place. Every time I hit that wire, it makes that move. Sorry about that, you guys. I have to retape it down so it doesn't bump every time I touch it. Just give me a holler when that happens. <laughs> all right, so my wet wipe, I'm going to be using about half of it on each card. So I'm going to go ahead right down the middle here and tear it the best I can. Now, if you get the little hairy parts and the little sticky outy parts, that makes it really cool too. So if you want to tear it all the way around or you want to tear a little bit on the other side, you can do whatever you want with that. Okay, so maybe we'll just have a little bit and I'll have to stretch it out a little bit to make it fit underneath there. Then that is going to be really cool. So there's another little watercolor technique that you can use and use your baby wipe for that. We're going to try to use this one right here. And I'm going to take my heat it tool. This is the Ranger heat it tool that's not quite as loud as the other ones. It will emboss um, the powders, but it takes a little bit longer than the other ones. But it's mostly used for like mixed media, um, like dehydrating things is what I think of it. So if I want this to get dry or I want to dry a project, but I don't want to blow everything all over Kingdom Come, I grab one of these. Now one really cool thing that I noticed when I was working with this is that if you start out with a really big piece and you want the ends to curl in a little bit, this will disintegrate and curl up if you get it too hot and too close to the heat. Hanson and Debbie Evans, Michelle Johnson, Jill Lucas, Kathy Godwin. Now the only reason why I really want this dry and why I'm taking the time to just do this is because we're going to put all that stuff, other stuff like on top of it. And so I want it to not be wet because I want all the adhesive to be able to stick. Hey, Brenda Gentry. Hello, everybody. It's a Friday night. I'm glad you guys are here. Thanks for hanging out. It's not too bad here. My other pieces are very, very wet, so I would just let those dry overnight. So I believe I used some different inks. However, I'm going to bring in two inks that are almost identical. I'm going to use Distress Oxide Blueprint Sketch. And I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Mode Lawn. Excuse me. The Distress is going to be for the flowers. Mode Lawn is going to be for the edges. Now, if you decide after you've done your green sprays and your greens aren't quite what the color that you wanted them you can always go back over you can always do the ferns again you can always redo so it's it's a forgiving kind of a thing so then we have to go back and we have to decide okay what part of this do we want as a background this one turned out really cool but it is a really thick watercolor so if i put that behind there it's going to be super vibrant a lot different than what i originally had in the beginning this one is a little bit more um a little bit closer to what i had so I think I'm going to stick with this one because it's got a little bit more detail. That's totally up to you. So I need to put this in my die cut machine. I've already got this ready to roll. Okay, so I'm going to use my Gemini. And I know I have to put my cut side up. But I put my cut side down on whatever the pretty part of my paper is. Tape it and then I can flip it over. That's going to be the gold piece that's that centers and goes underneath that P 
piece that we just watercolored right here. So the smaller one, this one, is what's going to go on here. So I'm going to have to cut this down a little bit. So then all you have to do is just decide. You want to put it down onto the piece that you want it. So you decide what you like. Like, do you want just a little bit of that to show? Do you want a little bit more of that fern part to show? Like, that's really pretty. Maybe we want that to show. That would be really, really, really cute. Like, right there. That's what I like. So I'm going to put a little piece of uh, tape to hold that down because I'm going to flip it over so that all my cut sides are up. So last time I showed you something on this, I think I messed that up big royally big time. All right, so what we're going to do here... Let's make sure our sandwich is straight and then put it through the Gemini. Okay, so here are the next pieces to our layers. Be careful how we take off this washi. I want to get that purple tape that doesn't tear the paper. Anybody in with me? We should order some of that purple tape. So here is that one. Really cool, and it's got the little indent around the edge, and that's gold. It's like a shiny gold. We can get some of this paper, um, however, I'm still looking for a better place to get it where it's less expensive. And then here is our fern one. This one turned out super good. And it's going to lighten up as it dries, so if it's still wet, it's going to be even a little bit lighter than that. So here's our piece. Look how cool that turned out. And now we're going to save this whole part right here because I might use that on another project. But that's the piece that we need to finish off. So let's go ahead and put that down. I'm going to get the Gemini pieces out of our way. And I save these little pieces of washi so I don't have to keep cutting them. I just stick them to the um, my desk right above my, my light. Yes, we can also order dies that are very similar to this. They're not identical to this shape, but they're super, super close. And I think they're nestabilities if I'm not wrong. So if you want to order those, if you guys are interested in an like a bundle order for what we do, what I did with this card, um, let me know and we'll do a bundle order for everybody. So here we've got our card base, which is going to be white. I think that's the refrigerator you can hear running. Or the freezer, one of the two. It's pretty loud. But I wanted it to I wanted it to stand out more because here if I put down this one, oh this one's really, really bright. Look, a totally different color. Totally different look. Check that out. It just depends on how much you spray and what colors you spray and what you combine. But I like that there's more color on there. I wanted more color than that on my other one. So what I did was I used a piece of paper that I think looks like green olive that goes with the darker ones. And I put this underneath there. So you could see that hanging out. Although this piece ended up to be pretty darn big, didn't it? I'm going to pull some off. I'm just going to try to make it a little bit smaller. So if we get rips and stuff, we can hide that underneath or we can leave it in there so that it looks, it gives it another really kind of a funky look to it, which I like. It's kind of like organic. I'm going to leave that. I think that looks really cool. But then I have a little bit more of my darker green hanging out. Let's go ahead and rip the top of this one off too. You can do whatever you want. 
I just, I want to play with it and get it to way, the way I like it. Now I distressed the green background sheet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hi, Virginia. Thanks for tuning in. That material is a baby wipe that we have watercolored. Cool, right? Sorry, guys. Got out of frame there a little bit. I won't turn on the on the blower because it freaks Jamie out. <laughs> so that'll be our background there. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. You can add in more layers. You could make this as intricate or as simple as you want. I really like the dark coming out from that back part. And then when we put this on here, all we have to do is put a little bit of glue. Where can I get the tool you are using to distress the cardstock? We can order a tool that's really similar to that if you're looking for that. Um, this one is a close to my heart one. I've had it for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. So I don't know if they still sell that or not, but I can't get close to my heart stuff. Um, I'm not a close to my heart representative in any way. <laughs> but I think Sizzix or Spellbinders or somebody like that has one. That's really cool. You can see the glue coming through this one. I didn't peel mine quite as, um, I didn't pull and get mine mine was like super opaque let me just show you real quick like I didn't get as much of the green on my last one and I put the glue underneath so maybe I should have just stuck the glue like right to the middle hopefully it'll dry clear enough that we won't notice all those dots um, but we are gonna dry we are gonna glue our panels down to that so some of it will get covered see you won't notice it all let me show you the difference so I just glued I put a little bit of glue down the whole thing and now once I put this part on you won't see very much of that at all, but I am going to use the same glue. They don't sell it anymore. Hmm. We can get distress, a distressed item like that for you guys. Just let us know. We'll start an order. We'll, we'll get that in for you. Try not to get the glue all over the shiny gold because you don't want that to get all mucked up. Now this, I wanted to stand out as well. So instead of just putting it straight down, I went ahead and edged in green. I did mowed lawn. I might do, yeah, I might still do mowed lawn. I'd like to do um, something that's a little closer to old olive. Cause I really like that, like maybe peeled paint would be, would be a really good, yeah, peeled paint. Hi Cindy. So guess what? I found my tools. Wah, wah. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use the peeled paint and that's what I'm going to put around the edge to make that pop. You can go as dark or as light as you want. If you want to put in that mowed grass color, you go right ahead and do that. I just really like this color and that's totally enough to make that pop. So inside of all my inks, I have a little piece of, um, felt that I cut. I just cut them to fit that. And then I leave it inside there. It doesn't hurt it at all. And then I can just keep using the same tool. So I don't have to buy a hundred tools. And I popped this one up last time. So we'll go ahead and pop this up again. And then we're going to pop up the flowers. But since we know how this is all going to layer on here, we can pop this up right now. And then we'll work on the flowers. This card comes together really, really easy. And um, with the 6x6, six six, you could do probably three or four of these cards with that. Hey, Cindy, that fuzzy stuff in the background, that's a baby wipe. Cool, right? Like, 
Who would have thought? You get a lot of looks from baby whites. I always tell people once they get some pretty colors on them to not throw them away. To dry them out and reuse them. I literally made myself a glasses case out of a dried one um, for one of the convoluted challenges in the patron only group. That turned out really neat. So here now I'm just going to try to get this in the middle best I can. Pop that up. So we've got like pieces left here too. So that might be kind of fun to put on a card as well. So I'm going to toss those over with the other piece that we saved. Here is the other piece of the wet wipe. The before we ripped it and, and tore it and stretched it. I do like this feathery look much better. Okay. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of white paper in here. Get out our deep red dogwood flower stamp. To be honest, when I ordered this, even though I, I looked, checked the size, I thought it was going to be a little bigger than it was. And I'm happy that it wasn't because this goes so well. So it's a clean stamp and I'm going to do it in blueprint sketch, but I want it to look watercolored, but not so watery that I don't have any detail in it. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's another watercolor effect trick. Okay. We're going to ink up those flowers in our blueprint sketch. It's not going to be the same color as, as I did before because this is a different ink than I, what I used. I wanted you guys to be able to get all these supplies if you wanted them. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Grab one of my water brushes. Oops, double. Nope, that worked. I thought I double stamped it by lifting it up. So here's how you're going to get the watercolor look. You're just going to go ahead and let some water, co water come down on there. And then you're going to go over the top of this. All willy nilly. You don't have to be like super perfect or anything like that. <clears throat> I think the more imperfect you are, the better it turns out. Because it's just going to kind of blur this and make it look like you watercolored those flowers. And if it gets way, way too watery and it starts blurring out and you're not getting distinct that you want, then go ahead and just dip, you know, a towel or something on there and get some of that off of there. Because you want some of the definition, right? So let me hold these up. This is how this turned out. So it looks watercolored. Now that is another way to watercolor. All I did was put my color down and then add the water. So two different kind of tip, tips and tricks. First thing we did was we used sprays and water to make our watercolor background. And this time we used a stamp and we stamped it down and then we did a watercolor. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fussy cut this. This is the part that I did not do ahead of time. Um, and I'm just going to cut around all these flowers. I don't, if you don't like to fussy cut, you can get any other kind of floral stamp that you have that has like a die cut um, that goes with it so that you can skip all this. I like to fussy cut. I don't have a problem with it. Another thing you can do if you want it to look stand out a little bit more is when you're done with this, with the fussy cutting, you can go ahead and edge, edge the flower, the whole cut piece out in blue again to make the edges look really finished. I probably won't do that because I want mine to look really watercolory. Yeah, so there's just so much more than just grabbing a watercolor palette and a, um, a brush and just using quote unquote watercolors, you know? And so that's what my series is about. This is series, this is number two, stamps and sprays. And um, the very first one, where did I put that? I should have brought it out. Anyway, there's one before this. So if you missed it, go back in the, uh, the digest or the um, list of videos. Go under the live tab. I don't know if yours is the same as mine, but go under the live tab and um, you'll find it. We did another technique of watercolor play. We did um, 
we did watercolor markers that's what we did we did watercolor markers and we just used water and markers and we smeared it all over the page and then we cut die cuts out of it and stuff it was really fun super fun so there's the end of my little thing um i went ahead and used to get this little um there's a white piece that could be cut out from right there in between the flowers. I'm not going to do that, but what I, if you want to, just get down a cutting mat that you can do and a, a sharp um, craft knife like this one. And you can cut that out. Now, I can't use this cutting one on the Tim Holtz mat because it's a different um, metal blade than what tonic is. They recommend you use a tonic blade when you're cutting on here so you don't scratch it. I tested mine over by the T, so there's a little scratch over here showing me that I should not use this. All right, so this is going to go right on top of here, and you're going to get to decide, you know, like, which way do you want to do it? Like, do you want to do it over here? Are you going to add a sentiment? Do you want to cut them apart and put one down here? Whatever, whatever not you want to do. I'm just going to go ahead, and they're dry enough that I can get some sticky tape back there. I'm going to foam pop this one up. And I think I'm going to put it right like that. Okay, so we've got a very watercolory, very pretty, whimsical kind of a looking card. Um, now, some people were almost done. <laughs> this card comes together really quickly. And like I said, if you do all of this ahead of time, you could do two, three, four cards. And they don't all have to look the same. One thing I don't like to do is cookie cutter cards. I really don't like that. But I will cut out two or three of the same kind of things and make three unique cards. That, I think, is really fun. Go ahead and wipe this stamp down. So that I can put that back in its little container. Yeah, I don't like, like, even around Christmas, and I, I never send cards. I'm horrible about it. I make billions of them, and I never send them anywhere. Um, but I don't like to make them all the same. Like, if I sent out a Christmas card, everyone would get a different Christmas card. Cause... All right. I'm just making sure that I have all my stuff where it needs to be because I want to clear this space off and show you how I did the, the gems. Okay. So these are regular pearl gems. There they are. Okay, they look like this. Probably have a bunch of them in your stash. And it doesn't matter what color they are. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some fine gold embossing powder on them and turn them this funky gold color that sort of matches but is a little bit darker than the gold that we have. That way we can have some for the center of our flowers and then a couple that maybe go kind of like you disperse like uh, sequins and stuff. We're going to do that. So I need about three for the center. One, two, three. And then maybe a couple for, so maybe I want to do about this many. That might be too many, but I can always use them later. Now, I don't know if this um, plastic is going to warp if I try to do this. Um, and it's not a super easy thing to do. Um, but I'm going to try to do it on here, which means there is going to be some powder that goes all over the place. What I did originally was I stuck it on this extra sheet of non-stick stuff that I have. It looks like this. Okay. Um, heat resistant non-stick. I stuck these all down on here and I embossed them on here. Maybe I should do that so I don't have to worry about my glass going all over. 
I was I was gonna say if you have this glass mat, you could do them right on here. But let's go ahead and do it on here. Last time I forgot my little embossing buddy, and I need to do that. I need to do that in the big bad way, cause it got everywhere, and then I had it everywhere. Where's my little stocking? There he is. Hi, friend. All right, so I'm gonna put down some of this, try to get rid of some of the static that comes along with these things, and then. And like I said, this is not easy. <laughs> this is really putsy work. So if you want to skip this and just buy um, gold ones that go along with it, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to stick them all down on here. Non-stick sheets, so hopefully they will re-stick when they're done, even though I put down a little bit of powder there. When you're doing putsy stuff like this, I highly recommend you get this tool. It's a, it's got a little cutter like and pusher on one end and then a sticky picker upper on the other end. It's called the quicker picker poker upper. And I do, I can get these as well. So if you're looking to get one of those, let us know. See, now we're getting into the little ones. So it's getting to be a little bit harder. What did you say, Michelle? Perfect card for using word dice cuts for the, yeah. So for sure. Like I said, this part is putsy, so if you don't wanna do the putsy part, just skip it. Now, to get the um, gold, and I'm using a fine gold by Stampendous, detailed gold, because these are kind of small. Um, an embossing marker. This is a Versa marker. So you got you guys probably already know about Versa. Where's my other little die? Here, you already probably know about these Versa mark ones. Still have the price tag on mine. Um, clear ink for embossing. This is just in a pen form so that I can color over the top of all these little gems. And hopefully we'll get this done. Look at these splits so we can move on. So I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way around, color all the way around these. I'm going to try go around the base and then swirl up to the top. Because whatever you don't cover is going to be pearl colored. I should, probably should have done these ahead of time. Okay, swirl around the bottom up to the top. This is one of those things where I wish I could have gotten like super close, but this camera will not go up. Okay, so swirl around the bottom and then swirl up to the top. Try to just coat the whole thing with that wet ink. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our embossing folder, I mean powder. You have to do this really thick because you wanna get it 300 and well, 180 or whatever around the whole darn thing. Okay, and this is where I made a mistake because I didn't use the embossing buddy. We'll see if that helped. Then we're gonna push it off onto here. Nope, it didn't make any difference in the world. So that's it, that stink. Do you see where all the embossing powder, powder stuck there? I don't think it would do that on the glass mat, which is why I was gonna try that, but we're gonna move on anyway. Here's how I'm gonna remedy this situation. I'm going to put this down first, and then I'm going to put them down. You know, like, it, like I said, if I could zoom in, I would. I'll try to maybe see if I can push this up a little ways. That work? All right, let's try it. I'm going to heat up my heat gun, and then, and then we'll go for it.
Now don't feel bad for my little sticky, my little non-stick thing. <laughs> there we have it. There are the gems and now they are a different color. And we're gonna go ahead and put them right onto our card because we're almost out of time. So I'm gonna use the medium ones. Yeah, don't feel bad for this little guy because um, the matte part, because this will all scrape off at the end. But I gotta try to get the, the um, usually I let them dry a little bit because the sticky underneath is still kind of sticking to the thing instead of staying on the pearl. That's why I'm digging on this. So you wanna make sure that your sticky part comes with it because otherwise it won't stick to your flower. If you have a problem, now that one came off really sweet. If you have a problem with that, just go ahead and use glue dots and go underneath. Um, so now I've got three of them on there as the centers. And what I'm gonna do with the rest of them is just create like triangles. So like a big one, a medium one, and a little one. See how I created a triangle there? That's kind of what I did here too. There's two triangles, three up here and three down there. And so that's what I'm gonna do just to get this. Um, there's one, Let's try a big one. Then we'll try a medium one. So I'll have a few left over. And that tops it off. That finishes it up. And then these guys, I might leave these here, but I just want to show you that if I use one of these, do you see how that comes right off? It's just going to scrape right off real clean. And then I'll just scrape it into the garbage. You see that? It just scrapes right off. And this is the um, Tonic Studio Scraper made specifically for this glass mat. But, you know, it works for lots of other things, too. It's really handy to have. So I'm just going to shake that off, but I'm going to leave these on there so that I can use up those last few that are there. And so this one I used a different ink. This one I did ahead of time, and the flowers turned out a little bit brighter. The one that we made today together. See, there's still a little bit of embossing powder on there. I'll get that with my Miracle Roller, roller later. There's the one we did today. A little bit more washed out. A little bit more watercolor. Looks really cool. And then here was an alternative one with the die cut. If you want to get the fern die cuts that go. Also, um, I didn't have a larger one than that background, but do you see there's a darker green border around here? All you have to do is take your largest background and then cut the sides and then layer them underneath. You're not going to get the full border, but you're going to get the effect that you have almost the full border. I'm talking about like this right here. That was an extra one that I made of the same size. I made it a darker green and then I just I just cut it off here and cut it straight off here and I tucked it underneath. Okay guys, so if you are interested in getting some of the supplies from the Quality Craft Store, we can get the stamps, the embossing powder, the embossing marker if you don't have one. We can get Distress Oxides if you're looking for those colors. Also, a set of dies that's almost just like these. Very, very similar. And I think that's about it. So if there's anything else that you're looking for, let us know. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a, fri a Free Play Friday video. And we happen to have a patron-only sale tonight afterwards um, from 6 till 7. And you will not find it here. So if you want to join in on those and see what's going on with the... Um, the community and what's new in the store, what's coming in all the time, you want to join and um, support the community by joining us on patreon.com backslash quality crafts. And um, when you do that, you'll get put into the 
uh, private group, which is where our video will be. So if you're looking for the patron video tonight, don't look here. It's going to be in our private group. And tomorrow, don't feel bad if you can't go to that one, because tomorrow will be our public sale from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now, if you're new and you've never um, been to one of our sales before, but you want to get in on it and you're not quite sure, I would really, really encourage you. As a matter of fact, I'd require you to watch the video ahead of time. I know it's a little lengthy, but I kind of put it into snips of how our sales work because this is a very unique kind of way of selling that we do. We have um, resale stuff in our group ahead of time before. We do pre-orders ahead of time, and then we do live sales. So there's a video, a little video all smooshed together that you can watch. It's on qualitycrafts.com. So go to qualitycrafts.com and click on um, the Crafty Garage Sales link and it'll take you right to that little video and your little sign-in form so that I know that you've seen that video and you understand how our sales work. And make sure you ask questions because I know there's going to be things that were not in the video that you're going to be wondering about. We'd be happy to help you. Always join us in the Quality Crafts community group and um, encourage other people to do that because that is where all of our information is disseminated about what's going on, um, if there's going to be a cancellation, things like that. So if you want to stay on top of what's going on in Quality Crafts, that is what you're going to want to do is join that community group. It's commitment and drama free. We'd love to have you. Again, now the sale will be tomorrow. And then it'll be two weeks before until the next sale, but always every week on Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we have either one in 10 by Jen video where I make a card in 10 minutes from scraps that you guys send in, or I do a free play Friday just like this where I show you how to create something or I share a technique. And we're still in the watercolor series, so I'll see you next Friday for another watercolor video. And I can't wait to see you guys next video.